Welcome everybody, Jay with you here. Um, taking a little trip in the woods and I wanted to bring all of you with me. Really nice woods here. A place to really disconnect, smell that fresh breeze. Look at this. I mean, you can't get this anywhere that I've seen really. Um, it's just amazing how much this is here. I mean, it's just really, really amazing. Um, look at Look at how deep these woods go. So quiet and serene. No one to bother you and mess with you. Of course, I'm looking forward, uh, forward to the nice, uh, the oxygen you get. So I want to talk a little bit about humidity. And so speaking of humidity, when I'm in here, I feel awesome. But out there, for sure, out, outside of these woods, look at this. I want to talk about how humidity is very impactful when it comes to eustachian tube dysfunction. Yes, it's true. It can really do damage on those eustachian tubes. And so I really want to dive into a little bit of how important it is. And I want to also say that if you're in a humid climate, which I am right now, surprisingly, is why I'm doing this video, is because yesterday humidity reached 81%, if I'm not mistaken. 81%, that is extremely high for me. And when I had eustachian tube dysfunction, I can tell you right now that I wouldn't have made it out of 81%. I would have made it, but it would have been a real, real hard kind of situation to get through. A lot of you are dealing with humidity and I wanna explain how it can really bother your eustachian tubes. And I'm gonna explain a little bit of that right now. Humidity plays a significant role in eustachian tube dysfunction by affecting the tube's ability to open and close properly. We're going to deal with something called high humidity, which is moisture accumulation. High humidity causes moisture to accumulate in the ear and eustachian tube, leading to swelling of the tube's mucous membranes, increased mucus production, trapped air and moisture, worsening ETD symptoms, as well as increased air pressure. This comes with high humidity as well. High humidity can lead to increased air pressure in the ear, making it harder for the eustachian tube to open and equalize pressure. Mucus thickening. High humidity can cause mucus to become thicker and more viscous, making it harder for the eustachian tube to clear mucus and debris. Now, when you're talking about high humidity, you're talking about somewhere along the lines of about maybe 60 to 80 percent, even 50 percent. Now, at those levels of humidity, you're going to deal with a lot of problems. And that's when you get the high humidity, which what, what I was explaining here. Now, let's talk a little bit about low humidity. And that's a huge deal as well as I go through low humidity in these woods here. Low humidity, dryness and congestion starts to begin. Low humidity dries out the nasal passages and eustachian tube, leading to congestion and swelling of the tube's mucous membranes. Increased mucus production, difficulty opening the eustachian tube due to dryness and congestion. Mucus adhesion. Low humidity can cause mucus to become sticky and adhere to the walls of the eustachian tube, making it harder to clear. An optimal humidity range is about 30 to 50 percent and is considered optimal for the eustachian tube. It's going to give you easy opening and closing of the eustachian tube, adequate mucus clearance, minimal swelling and congestion. This is going to be really beneficial to stay within this range and that's why when it gets outside of this range, you're going to notice a lot of problems. So you got to really stay in tune with the humidity levels of where you are depending on how it is. Back at home where I live, the humidity range is about 19%, so I'm very blessed for that. That's the average. Here, by the way, you can get all the way up to 81% overnight. So just be cautious of your humidity levels. Be aware of how they play a role with the eustachian tube because you want to stay in optimal range. Now, of course, you can't do anything to prevent humidity 100%, but you can definitely prepare for it. And I'll explain some things you can do right now. One of the biggest relief measures that I really go to is humidifiers. It adds moisture to dry air, helping to loosen mucus and promote eustachian tube dysfunction. Nasal decongestants reduce nasal congestion, making it easier for eustachian tube to open. When I'm talking about uh, decongestion, nasal decongestion, I'm talking more so about the nasal inhalers because those don't give you all the bad medicinal properties that can affect a lot of properties of your body. Uh, more specifically, blood pressure. Uh, saline nasal sprays is very important. It moisturizes the nasal passages in the eustachian tube. Eardrops are also help to lubricate the ear canal. And most importantly, 
drink plenty of fluids. This is going to thin out mucus and promote drainage. Steam inhalation uh, as well. If you can't get to the nasal inhalation, then try to steam. This is going to help breathe in warm, moist air to loosen the mucus and reduce congestion. And then you also want to practice your station tube exercises. This is going to be something you need to do regularly, like swallowing, yawning, and the Valsalva maneuver. But keep in mind the Valsalva maneuver is something you should do with caution. As well as you want to be sure if you have any food allergens, which is not usually the case, but if you do, with dairy, is going to be one of the things you want to be in touch with because it can definitely increase mucus production. And you also want to be in touch with anyone that handles your care if you're trying anything new. So those are a couple of little things you can do. I'm going to dive more deeper into this uh, category because I think humidity is a huge thing that a lot of people may not be aware of. So as I go through these woods, I want all of you to... Keep this video in mind when humidity starts to increase. Check in with your local weather channels. Look at your weather. Um, go through your weather channel. Um, it's kind of geeky, but I've been doing that for many years. And it's something that really helps you prepare for what things you may need moving forward. So I hope this video was very helpful for you. If it was, please take time to subscribe to the channel. I'll try to bring content as often as possible. But in the meantime, I'm going to get out of the woods here. And maybe later, soon, step into my J-Well in the studio and leave you in good hands with this video. Like anything else, folks, we are here to simply go back to the basics. Take care, everybody, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. <whistles>